Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another Minecraft video. Today, I wanted to tackle a subject that I think is very important when you're wanting to be a better builder. Now, we're not gonna be focusing on the physical building. What we're gonna be focusing on is the conceptual infrastructure that you make for your different builds, whether that be a one-off build on a random pathway that's in some random forest, or a village or a city that you're making and building up. And by conceptual infrastructure, what I mean is the lore behind everything. So how to build better with lore. And so that is gonna be the subject for today's video. And I wanted to tackle this in a way that is pretty efficient. So I'm trying to make the video not terribly long. Um, and I wanted to kind of cover eight tips, tricks, what have you, eight different things that I use when I'm building up my world, when I'm actually creating and thinking of the lore that goes behind these builds. Now you may be wondering, how can lore help me build better? And for that, I would say very similar to when you're building up a, a building, you're thinking first of the uh, sort of the infrastructure that builds it up. Like you're thinking of the support beams and seeing where the walls are gonna be. Um, very similar with lore, having a conceptual infrastructure just adds another layer of depth that you can't see, but you yourself as the creator know it's there. And so as a YouTuber, it's not necessarily for you guys. It's not for the viewer. Um, it's purely for me. It's for me to be able to enjoy my world on another level that you can't really experience unless you actually have this world. So when I have world downloads and stuff, I want to share it because I want you guys to be able to experience it as well and feel the same thing that I feel. But it's also a way to keep yourself really invested in your world and to be able to come back to old builds and really just experience them the way you intended them to be experienced. And so with introductions out of the way, let's go ahead and get on into the eight different things that I use, eight different almost questions that I use to build better with lore. So to start things off, I wanted to take you to this town right here. This is the town of Sarthal that we started building up a while ago. It is essentially complete some minor odds and ends that are in there that will probably always be in there to finish. But it is a farming town and as you can see it gets quite expansive and I think overall it is quite a cool little town here. You can see there's a keep on top of a castle, there's a giant temple down below, and the houses that are scattered all over the place with a lot of farms. Now the thing about this town is it is fully centralized around a single question, which is the first thing that I would highly recommend that you tackle when starting a new build, and that is the question why? Ask yourself why. Why am I building this? Why is this going to be here? So for this place, the main thing that centralizes this town is the question, why are the Endermen here? And now you can see the main prominent build in this town is this cathedral. And the cathedral is probably one of my favorite builds that I have made to date in Minecraft. And it's not just because it's a cool looking build, if I do say so myself, but it's also because of the lore that goes behind it. So the question, why are the Endermen here, is what really drove me to dig deeper into this town and answer a lot more about this build that I was going to be doing. So the question, why are the Endermen here, is what really drove me to this area. And so the whole town is built around the premise of explaining why the End Portal and the Endermen are a thing in this world. And so because of that, this is what really drove me to pick this location, for one, um, and two, drove me to pick this sort of theme in the town there's going to be a there's a theme and lore that goes behind this town that really helps solidify it in our world but also explain why the endermen are here now the end portal is something that made me pick this town but i needed to answer another why question why is this town here the end portal is not what i wanted to drive people here the thing that i wanted to drive them here 
was something that a king would be drawn to, and that is that this soil here is potentially the most fertile soil in the entire land. The soil in this town is just so stellar at growing stuff that that's what drove the king to make his keep on that mountain. One, it's a great defense place, but two, for the soil here because he knew that the town would prosper due to how well of a farming town it could be. And so that's why we focus such a large area of this town to being purely crop fields. One, because they're super fun to build in Minecraft, and two, because of the lore that we are establishing. This town is a farming town, and so it needs to have tons of farms. There's farms all over the town. There's farms on one side, there's farms all the way around the keep, tons of different crops available here, and you can use your imagination to continue with potential exploration of more crops if Minecraft ever comes out with like corn or something. Lord, please give us corn. Now the question why can be used for a lot of different things. You can say why, you can lead yourself down a path of just endless why questions. Why is the temple so big? Well, it's because the king thinks that this land was given to him as a gift from the god of mankind. And so he's built a large temple to the god Os, which is the god that we have in our lore for mankind. And you can see just such a, a snowball effect of all these why questions. So this is why I, I stress this question so much, this point. Ask the question why. You're not going to regret figuring out why things are happening in your world. If anything, it's going to drive you to build even more. This town used to be only this bottom area. And then I asked the question, why is there only lower houses? Why not be houses closer to the king for more protection? And thus we made larger platforms for more houses to be on. And it just expands your builds, expands your thoughts, and makes you actually think a little bit more about your builds. The next point I have is much shorter, much more, much less in depth, but it's simply just ask yourself, how am I gonna interact with this area? So as you can see, we're here and we're walking around and I wanted the first main thing you see to be both the temple and the keep. And you can see that the temple is nearly as big as the keep and is tall and the keep is on top of a mountain. So this stresses the religious beliefs in this area, but you also get to walk amongst all of the crop fields here, and you get to explore around and see all the different importance that crops have for this town. And so that's just a simple question, how am I gonna interact with this? And this can go even beyond just pathways and buildings and stuff. You can go into the travels. If someone's traveling through here, how are they actually gonna make it? I made these roads specifically wide enough for wagons to go through. We're gonna build some wagons in this area here soon because I want to have a little bit more life here. So maybe some wagons along the road to show that there are people coming and going as they are traveling from here to the other towns that we have yet to build. Now, another way that you can add even more depth to your lore is to add little things, even if it's just for you, if you're never gonna share this world, it's something you've put into this. So we've got this little farmhouse here in the middle of the wheat field, and you would think nothing of it, but if you walk around the back, you've got this cellar here that you can enter, and right here, you can see that there is some weird plant life going on with some interesting ground stuff, but you don't know what that is. But then there's a, a purple, potato like what is going on here so if you open this up you get an entire farmer's journal and I've made this diligently putting into detail the various different events that have caused the purple potato to become a thing and so you can see there are multiple multiple pages weeks of various different things that have gone on in this farmer's life that he or she are writing down to be able to keep track of. And now you can even see we go into silliness like most of the journal entries too smudged to read, just like in Skyrim or something like that, where you've got journals you can't even see. Now you've got even more talk and it just explains a little bit about the world and you don't even have to read it ever again. But it explains this purple potato because if we look at the backside of the temple, we have a whole mess of stuff going on. So it's consistency amongst your lore as well. And so that is the second point. How am I gonna interact with this? 
is it buildings, travels, things you can read, all sorts of stuff to tie into this. It doesn't have to be just those three things. Those are just some of the things that I've found have made it more and more impactful to have around in my world, just to have fun interacting with. Now, another fun thing to do is to ask yourself, what goal is there beyond just one area that I'm building in? And by that, I mean simply, what will other areas that I'm building experience with this? Like this area is definitely not the only one that's gonna be facing this end problem. It's the only area we fleshed out currently, but that doesn't mean it is limited to just this area because there are other end portals for one in this world. So we could do something with that. And there's definitely Endermen all over the place. So picking a subject that you can apply everywhere else is definitely worthwhile because it is super impactful if you can tie all of your world together. I mean, if this entire farming town has an end problem just like the gypsy camp and just like the town of Moore, just imagine what you are going to feel when you can see how the end is affecting each different civilization that you're building up. Another great question to ask yourself is where did this all start? Meaning what is the source of the idea that you're wanting to implement? Doesn't have to be a problem all the time, but in the case of Sarthal, it is a problem. It's an end takeover sort of thing. And so the problem that we've got in this town is actually dealing with the crypt of the town. And so below the temple, we have some issues going on an abandoned crypt where the king has been stored his dead body and all that stuff you know how death goes but below us we even have even further end exposure a tunnel that leads down to the end portal and this is truly the source of where all the issues lie now for this i would simply say get more specific than saying the problem is at this town so for example in sarthal the answer to this question is in this town of Sarthal, at the back of the temple, there are purple potato looking plants that are making people sick. That's how the problem first came to be noticed. People knew it was something wrong at the temple because of an exterior thing that's right outside the temple, and it's only growing at the back end of the temple, which is where the exposure might be the strongest, and that is where the king is buried himself. Now, a great question to ask, another great question to ask yourself is when did this all happen? Did it occur recently or has it been many, many, many years since it has happened? It's in the distant past and it's kind of almost forgotten. Now, in the tomb, there is a crypt of the king, and that is actually the very first king that founded the town, and he is not actually the king that caused all the problems in this area. Um, but one of the specific things I did for the town of Sarthal to sort of show that it's been roughly like a hundred years or so is that there is a lot of life still in the town. There's a lot of happiness that can be felt within the stalls. You can see many, many plants and things, many goods that are being sold, paintings, beetroots, all sorts of stuff, pumpkins. The stalls are not lifeless. People haven't fully abandoned them or anything. There's not that type of void of life. It's nothing like the town that we're currently building that is completely abandoned. Only one building has anything in it and it's got a thug running it. So it's not even like that prominent of a building. There are houses in the upper district that have things. There's a blacksmith, flowers are growing. People are happy in this town. And I wanted to get that across, but there's also the bad side of town that has these houses that are being corrupted by void radiation that are being changed into the void, being manipulated by the end. And so these are houses that people are afraid to touch or afraid to go near. And of course, they are the ones that are closer to the temple. Now, they have found ways to be able to counteract these things that are happening to the houses, but some of these people have just up and left. So there is a bit of an ominous atmosphere to this town, but I wanted this to be in the background. I wanted the happiness to be seen at first, but then as you dig deeper, you get a little bit of that ominous feeling. Even the temple itself, if you look at it just from the entrance, it doesn't look 
bad. It actually looks like a decent temple. But as you're going through, you can kind of see, oh, there's a hole in the floor, and I'm not sure what's going on here. But then suddenly you can see down below where there is void manipulation going on. And so if you can settle upon a mood that you would like to have in your town, definitely figure out the mood that you want and then run with it and really try to shape it into a unique one. So this one, this town, I would say there's evidence of fear still at the background of things, but there has, there's a relaxation that has begun. And this can really take your town to the next level because, I mean, if you're building and you just have a couple buildings here and there and they don't really feel like there's a connection more on a personal level, then they're just gonna feel like empty buildings. It's not gonna feel like there's life. But if you add these little details, I promise there's gonna be some life that is added to your builds. Another great question is to ask yourself, how? How did this happen? I mean, we're basically just going through the list of who, what, when, where, how, why types of questions, and it's because they're fantastic for writing your own lore, for figuring out your world just a little bit more than not actually thinking through this stuff. Now, for this town in specific, the town of Sarthal, it's all because King Rayan III heard some voices happening below the temple, and so he ordered his underlings to dig and try and find these voices, and eventually they drove him mad. And then eventually they drove him to the point where he himself did the digging, and he was digging in the middle of the night, uncovered the portal, and was basically driven entirely insane at that point, fell into the portal, and that's when the connection was made. Very similar to the Upside Down. If you've ever seen uh, Stranger Things, it's kind of a similar concept that as soon as Eleven actually touches the Demogorgon, then the connection between the Upside Down and the world has been made. There's a weakening, and they can get in and out of the world at that point. Very similar idea, but just with the Enderman. So he fell into the portal and thus has made the connection and Enderman poured out of the portal and infested this world. Now, my seventh point is pretty simple. It's basically just saying, how can I expand what I've created with this lore to being more than just for this town and I'm not necessarily meaning for other towns in this world like for Sarthal in specific the lore revolves around King Rayan the third falling into the portal he made the connection that caused the Enderman to come here but the question is where is King Rayan the third there's been no contact with him we have no idea what happened to him so the next thing that we have to ask ourselves is is there going to be something in the end that we build? Is there going to be something that extends this lore even further into the end? Is King Rayan III doing something to manipulate the Enderman? Or has something happened to him? Is he just dead? I don't know. We could just, we could cut it off right there and say he's dead. Or we can expand into the end and make like an end kingdom or something like that. And the last point I have is fairly straightforward. And that is have fun with making the lore. Don't stress yourself out if you can't come up with something super deep. Not all lore needs to be super deep. There doesn't need to be a journal on every single house di like dictating exactly what has happened in the past for every single villager that has ever once lived in this town. Doesn't need to be that in depth. If you have if you're struggling, look up resources online. Look up all sorts of different things that can inspire you. You want to have fun. If you're not having fun doing this, if you're not having fun adding lore to the world, then figure out a way that you can really make it fun. Make it so that making the background of your story is actually something that you truly love. And if it means combining wacky ideas, then sure, go for it. If you want to make some weird reason why futuristic modern builds are actually in a medieval world, go for it. I mean, if you can figure that out, you'll be the best Minecrafter in the world. So just have fun doing it, and you'll find, I think, that you'll enjoy your builds more when you actually have a background to them and a background that connects them and makes a story amongst all of them so that you can have a great world to walk around in and experience. I can't tell you how much fun it is to just walk around this world and actually experience 
the town for what it is. It's such a blast and I really do love experiencing all these different builds and being able to go back through memory lane and know exactly what's going on and why I was building this town at the time. And so that's going to do it, I think, today for this video. I hope it has helped. I hope you find that it is useful, and I hope that you have enjoyed these eight tips. I tried to keep it quick. I tried to keep them concise, but of course, you know me. I like to blab. So if there's anything you think I missed or anything you would like to hear me talk more on, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to be able to answer your questions, talk to you about it, because the lore of the world is truly something that I am passionate about. I love making it, and we're going to be getting into a lot more in our single player series because we've strayed away from it a little bit and I think it's time that we actually jump back in because I have a lot of ideas. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like in real life and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hey,